with me right here is the new ASICS Gel Nimbus Lite 3. ASICs have been impeccably strong over the past season. The new Nimbus is perhaps the best Nimbus in recent time. The Cumulus is fantastic and even their trail running range is especially strong. It's almost like the brand has seen a paradigm shift in the past few years as they've switched from being a conservative traditional brand to a forward thinking edgy brand. The Gel Nimbus Lite 3 is one of the newer contemporary shoes within the ASICs lineup. It's the lighter streamlined version of the traditional Nimbus, which leverages off its two and a half decades worth of heritage and success that it's had in the running market. So let's talk about the shoe's tech specs, working our way from the top down. This upper unit on the shoe is perhaps one of the most interesting units I've come across. The standout features this thin gusseted tongue, meaning that it's stitched in. This tongue is long and perhaps the most elasticated tongue I've come across and surprisingly one of the nicest tongues I've encountered on a running shoe. Up front here we've got a upper that is strong, textured and breathable. Really not much more you could want from it and it's even made from recycled material. Inside the shoe we've got a rather basic sock liner or insole that feels like it's made from recycled material but not in a complimentary way. It's not really an essential element of the shoe because its cushioning is so soft and comfortable. So really it doesn't need to compensate with a nice insole. The midsole of the shoe has a nice stack height to it, very comparable to the traditional Nimbus. It's classified as a well cushioned trainer, which sits just below the maximum cushion trainer category, which has the likes of the Fresh Foam More, the Bondi and the Tempo Next Percent. But then below the wild cushion trainers, another category called your daily trainers, which features the likes of your Cumulus, Pegasus and Wave Riders. So it sits in a nice traditional wild cushion category. For its category, it's particularly light. It weighs a mere 277 grams in my US 11, or 260 grams, which is 9.2 ounces in a sample size, which is a US 9, UK 8 in men's. Its durometer is particularly soft. It compresses quickly, but I don't find that it's as responsive as something like the New Balance 1080, which equally so compresses quickly, but also rebounds quickly. Because of its softness, there's not much need for a break-in period. It's really good straight out of the box. To put it in a short sentence, the shoe is light, soft, and well-cushioned, but not that responsive. And at the end of this video, I explain exactly which type of runner all these characteristics suit. Like a couple other shoes in the ASICS lineup, the drop on a pair of men's Gel Nimbus Light 3s is 10 millimeters, while a women's is 13 millimeters. So there's a gender difference. And this has to do with research ASICS did on sports injuries. They found that because men and women have slight differences in anatomy, um, such as a difference in hip width, a difference in cue angle and a difference in knee mobility, generally speaking. In a nutshell, they found that by giving men and women different drops, they were able to collectively lower injury risk. A lot of runners are quite particular about a shoe's heel to toe drop and would classify this 10 millimeter or 13 millimeter drop as a high drop. I personally don't find the drop that noticeable, but I think more runners need to be perhaps a little less stubborn or a bit more open-minded about a shoe's heel to toe drop, as it's one of various factors that determines a shoe's underfoot ride. Anyways, you've got some laser etching on the shoe's sidewalls with a Nimbus detailing up front here. And then underneath the shoe, you've got plenty of flex grooves, which give the shoe a nice flexible underfoot feeling and sort of contrast the rocked, rigid shoes that are growing in popularity in the market at the moment. As is standard with ASICs, you've got gel pockets within the shoe, except they're hidden on this shoe. There's one in the forefoot and one in the heel. ASICs gel is comparable to Nike's air bags or air pockets, both of which aren't new technologies, but, are, but work nicely and are too brand centric to leave out. This design of the shoe incorporates what we call a full ground contact, meaning that there's no hollow bits or cutouts in the shoe. 
so your whole so the whole surface area of the shoe gets to touch the ground upon heel to toe transition which generally gives you a more balanced ride which i'm inclined to prefer the rubber outsole on the shoe is solid and asics are reputable in this area they use a hard wearing rubber and reduce reduce the rubber coverage on areas that aren't essential so it doesn't make the shoe too heavy too stiff and also just where it's not necessary rubber is growing or rubber is firstly heavy but it's also growingly expensive so more and more brands are headed in this direction of minimizing their rubber but what some brands do is treat this exposed EVA with either chemical or process that makes it a little bit more resilient the only runner I see this not suiting is someone who does extensive off-road running or someone who's notoriously fast in wearing through their shoes. Apart from that, the shoe will do just fine. In terms of sizing, the shoe fits true to size. It's just slightly broader in the midfoot section than previous versions, so it should accommodate for a variety of foot shapes. So back to my question, who do I think the shoe is most suited for? Well, in short, it's going to suit someone looking for a light, soft comfortable shoe that's not necessarily made for speed it's gonna best suit easy and recovery run pace but will do the trick approaching up tempo pace however don't let the light in its name mistake you into thinking it's a speed shoe look there are runners who will find the shoe super comfortable and perhaps aren't super serious about performance but more want a comfortable shoe to perform all their runs in and they'll get away with this just fine because they're not too fussed about losing a few seconds per K come interval run day. So for the maybe non-serious runner who favors comfort over the pure performance side of things, this could be your daily trainer to do all your runs in. I think the strength of the traditional Nimbus is that it's been a work or shoe for so many runners for so many years. It's comfortable, it's supportive and it's durable. And most runners wearing it aren't looking for anything flashy. They just want a dependable shoe that they can lace up and not have to think too much about what's happening underfoot. But the legacy of the traditional Nimbus doesn't always appeal to younger runners who don't necessarily look for the same thing out of a running shoe than what perhaps their parents do. Younger runners aren't used to well-developed heel counters or sturdy designed or stiff midsoles that almost all shoes had 10 to 15 years ago. Instead, they look for shoes that have step and comfort, have flexibility and a playfulness to it. So in a way, the Nimbus Lite is really just the traditional Nimbus in a contemporary form, designed for the younger runner or a runner who lost excitement in the traditional Nimbus over the years. All in all, the Gel Nimbus Lite 3 is an exciting addition to the ASICS assortment. It's a shoe based on my preference I'd only wear a few times a week, reserving it for easy or recovery runs. It's not a significant update from last season, but mostly an update of the upper while also shedding a few grams throughout the shoe. If you are a stability runner, the good news is that it does have a cousin in the form of the Gel Kayana Lite, which offers extra medial support. I hope this review has been helpful. Give my channel a subscribe and let's talk about running shoes again very soon. Cheers.